مصاحبه وزیر پیشین دادگستری آمریکا فاکس نیوز 22 سپتامبر این یک قتل عام کامل است ژنرال آمریکایی میگوید در فیلم ها چکمه هایی را دیده است که آمریکایی ها به نیروهای عراقی دادند کاری که کاخ سفید تا به حال کرده ابراز تأسف بوده که بیمعنی است دولت آمریکا بیشتر نگران رنجاندن رژیم ایران است در حالی که آنها بودند که برنامه تسلیحاتی اتمی رژیم ایران را افشا کردند روشن است که چرا اراقی ها و رژیم ایران میخواهند آنها را از صحنه حذف کنند آمریکا باید آنها را با هواپیما از عراق خارج کند ما این کار را در دوران هولوکاست کرده ایم با جمعیت های دیگر هم کرده ایم الان هم می توانیم اگر بخواهیم به خوبی این کار را انجام بدهیم مریم رجوی زنی که ملاها را دیوانه کرده است Well, have you heard about this? There's growing outrage and questions over the massacre of 52 Iranian exiles in Iraq. That attack taking place September 1st north of Baghdad. The spot is called Camp Ashraf, and it served as a sanctuary for Iranian exiles opposed to the regime in Tehran. International observers brand that as a crime against humanity, and there are calls for the United Nations to step in. Joining us now is former Attorney General Judge Michael McCasey on the investigation. Mr. Attorney General, thank you for coming in this morning. Well, this is only the latest in a series of attacks on these folks by the Iraqis who are being manipulated by and are a client state of Iran. You think that the Iranians are pulling the strings? I think it's quite clear that they are. Um, in connection with some of the attacks, the, uh, the victims, those who survived, reported that some of the attackers spoke Farsi. So it's pretty clear that... Iranians are involved. What is, I mean, it's horrible when you have the descriptions from the people who survived. They say, for example, that men were handcuffed and then shot in the head, and this sort of thing, just a total slaughter. But the Iraqis say, we don't know who did it, they deny that they were involved. Yeah, well, US, uh, a U.S. general who actually supports these folks and has, uh, was, was in charge of, of the camp during the period that the United States troops were in Iraq, said that he's seen videos and he recognizes U.S. provided boots on the troops who attacked them. Um, if you look at the videos of attacks that took place in 2009 and 2011, they're driving American Humvees. So the Iraqis obviously were involved, and they are doing what they did before, which is lying about it. They're lying, and what does the uh, White House, and what do we do about this? I mean, has, has... Well, what the White House ought to do, about, what we've done up until now, regrettably, is nothing. And uh, unfortunately, I think the administration is a little bit concerned about offending the Iranians now that we're supposedly uh, trying to conclude some sort of agreement with them. Oh, These people, by the way, provided intelligence on the Iranian nuclear mm -hmm. program. And it's clear why they want them out of the, why the Iraqis and the Iranians want them out of the way. Look, this happened just last month, sept uh, this month, September 1st, a few weeks before Rouhani comes here to New York, where he's coming here tomorrow for the nuclear negotiations. Do you see that connection? I think it's pretty obvious. These folks have contacts in Iran who can provide information if the Iranians are not doing what they say they're doing. So the best thing from the Iranian standpoint is to eliminate them. Hmm. Now the group is the MEK and they've been kind of controversial. For, for many years they were on the terror list for, for a long time, just taken off it recently. You know, and critics have faulted the group. Uh, what about that? Uh, should that have any uh, sense of fear? They were, they were put on the list as, in an attempt to please the Iranians. They were kept on the list out of fear that the Iranians would do us harm in Iraq, which of course they did anyway. They were taken off the list as a result of a, a, a court case that they brought, and there was no evidence to keep them on. Um, they have been friendly to the U.S. They, they stand for establishing a democratic, non-nuclear Iran with equal rights for everyone. The head of the organization is a woman, which drives the, the mullahs crazy. Mm -hmm. And um, the thing to do now is to airlift them out. If only the U.S. could get, just forget about the, any investigation, just airlift them out of Iraq. Why can't we save them? We can't. What, what's lacking is political will. From where? From the United States. And we, we provided these people with a, guarantee, a written guarantee signed by a U.S. general in 2003 when we invaded Iraq that they would be treated as protected persons. We've gone through this before in the Holocaust. We've gone through this with other populations. It would seem we're at that point today where we should 
potentially be able to do this in if fact, it's wanted. There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a photograph that I have here mm -hmm. that shows one of the victims, one of the 52 people killed, a woman and her protected person mm -hmm. card. Regrettably, it wasn't bulletproof. Oh, man. Well, you know, Iran, you know, they're praising what happened. Let's take a quick look at a Press TV. They issued this statement. That's the Iranian news outlet. Iran praises Iraq efforts to close Camp Ashraf. Iran is calling on the country supporting the terrorist group, they say, to stop their financial and political backing. The attack came at the hands of a group of Iraqi people. Attorney General uh, Michael McCasey, thank you so much. We'll see if anything at all happens this week at the United Nations. Thanks.